Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is all about the brand new May 20 Pro from Huawei. Uh, I'm going to do an unboxing and a quick demo of some of the main features on this device and what makes it so special. This is TK. Let's go ahead and check out this bad boy. Here we have the box, the Huawei Mate 20 Pro, triple camera, Leica certified. Of course, uh, this is continuing the relationship between Huawei and Leica, but this is the first time we've seen triple cameras on a Mate device, as in history, we've always had dual cameras. And here we are. Uh, the phone actually is pretty good, a little bit heavier than what I remember. Let's go ahead and just take out the plastic here. Um, the black coloring here is pretty good. Uh, this is the black edition. There's 128 gigs of internal storage, six gigs of RAM. Uh, we have a red accent button that's sitting right here. Of course, we have the triple camera setup with the dual tone LED flash sitting here uh, for the Leica lenses. Um, on the top, we have one of the IR, well, this is an IR blaster and a microphone, two bands, of course, here for the antenna bands. Uh, on the right side, we have a volume rocker, power button. At the bottom, what we have here essentially is a SIM tray that's capable of holding two nano SIMs or one nano memory card. It's a new technology that Huawei wants to try to push, uh, but essentially is that you can't expand the storage on here. You do need to buy the memory from Huawei as they're the only ones making it right now. We have USB-C for data as well as, of course, uh, headphone jack since we don't have a headphone jack, a microphone, the two other additional bands. Um, on the left side is pretty much all clean. You'll notice that the design here is very, very reminiscent of other devices that have been on the market for some time. Um, and if I actually have to kind of like just point them a reference here, you could see uh, the design has learned a lot. Of course, the button placement is very different. Uh, the aesthetics are slightly different. But when you look at it from the top, when you look at it from the bottom, uh, they definitely have uh, have some inspiration from those areas. So on the front, what we have here is a 6.39 inch, almost 6.4 inch uh, Quad HD display. This is about 538 PPI. It's an OLED display, so we're gonna get really good colors, of course. Uh, it's approximately about 88 or basically 88% uh, screen to body ratio, as we still have a notch present here with the top mounting speaker, as well as the front facing sensor, and of course a 3D sensor for better face unlocking technology. So the front facing camera is a 24 megapixel wide angle lens capable of fitting in more PPI People, of course when you're trying to take those front-facing selfies now that's complemented with a triple camera setup as I mentioned to you guys we have a 40 megapixel sensor a 20 megapixel sensor and an 8 megapixel telephoto sensor so we're still able to do that optical uh, zoom which essentially is the three-step zoom so one time three time and five time but now we also have the ability of going wide and that's where we get that benefit of the 20 megapixel ultra wide lens we dropped the monochrome sensor for an ultra wide and I think that's a good compromise continuing looking at the box uh, we do get a case uh, as well as some documentation, SIM removal tool, and here is the 40 watt quick charge. This is a brand new type of technology that enables us to charge this device from between for 30 minutes to up to 70% of that 4200 milliamp battery that's powering here. We went also higher by 200 milliamps from the standard 4000 that we've always seen on the mate line of devices. Uh, now this is a European plug, so I'll have to use an adapter to be able to check it out. Uh, other than that, we have USB-A to USB-C data conne connection cable. Of course, the three and a half millimeter headphone jack is now uh, present in a USB-C to get a three and a half millimeter headphone jack adapter for headphones or you can use the bundled uh, EarPod style uh, headphones, so USB-C as well, right and left. The Mate 20 Pro is a device that's really the child of the Mate 10 Pro and the P20 Pro. It basically combines both technologies, the Mate line of devices of a powerhouse, as well as the P design and of course aesthetics with the triple cameras that we had this year. And then now we have the Mate 20 Pro. Now, some of the main differences, of course, we went from a double to a triple camera here. Uh, the fingerprint sensor is now built into the display, which is very, very new. And of course, now we have the aesthetics that we have here, which is the triple camera, but we did lose the monochrome sensor. So we gained a wide angle lens as opposed to a monochrome sensor, but we kept the triple camera setup. The fingerprint sensor on the Mate 20 Pro, of course, is at the bottom of the display. And here, sorry, the P20 Pro is on the bottom of the display. For the Mate 20 Pro, it's now built into the middle of the display. So let's go ahead and power it on. Okay, we have felt that vibration. Uh, but other than that, I think we We'd still have obviously the IR blasters, uh, the headphone jacks are still missing, stereo speakers are still present, uh, placement of the volume rock and the power button are pretty much in the same spot, you'll notice we still have nothing here, although the SIM tray did move from the side to the bottom. So here we have it, the brand new EMUI 9.0 with Android 9.0 on the Mate 20 Pro. We'll go into the settings, we'll go all the way down to the bottom and about phone, LYA L29 9.0.0.113. Uh, EMUI 9.0, Android 9, not 9.1. Powering this device is the Kirin 980, Huawei's first 7 nanometer chipset. And what you get there essentially is a big, medium, little architecture with the octa-core setup. And that means two high-powered cores, two medium cores, and four low-power cores. 
uh, that's basically just giving you more power, for, more performance for less power consumption. That's the best way to describe it. Uh, we have six gigs of RAMs, 128 gigs of internal storage, a Quad HD display, of course, and the security update all as far as October 1st. And here we are, Android Pie. EMUI 9.0 has a lot of cool things coming into it. Uh, of course, I already have gestures turned on. You probably noticed that I'm actually using gestures from to move around. Um, you have the ability, of course, still having your navigation gestures. You can go into them, you can go into settings, go all the way down to the bottom, system, navigation, and we have the ability of going between gestures, 3 key navigation, as well as navigation dock. Uh, by default, when it comes out of the box, it actually comes this way, so I went ahead and turned it on here. Uh, of course, you're probably wondering, how does that fingerprint sensor work? Uh, you'll notice right there, let me turn off the screen, and that's where the position for it is. So if I put in the wrong finger, it's gonna try to recognize it, it's not gonna go. So you notice it lights up, it illuminates the finger, and it tries to scan it and I can actually put in the right finger and it'll unlock it correctly. Uh, we do have a 3D sensor that's positioned right there next to the uh, speaker, and that gives us, of course, the ability of using unlock. And right there, you notice it unlocked it right away, and it works pretty well. Uh, registration of this is pretty simple, very similar to other devices. The only difference is we're not using the front-facing camera. We're actually using a 3D sensor to be able to actually map our, defi or our, our face when we're able to use it. Um, but other than that, you, for the most part, don't see the fingerprint uh, ID here. It does not show up. Uh, we have Google Now uh, basically sitting the feed on the left side. Uh, launching the assistant with the gestures is a little bit different. You actually have to swipe from the sense side here. So we'll go back home. Uh, if you swipe up in the middle, that just takes you back. So here's the Play Store. I can go home, swipe up and hold. It takes us into the Recents application. I can go back. But if I want to go in, let's say under Charts, and I want to go back one, uh, just swiping from the edges of the display does that same functionality, which essentially is back. But other than that, you're enjoying this massive display. Uh, yes, we do have a notch. That's something that we can't get rid of, but we can definitely mask. So if you go under display and you'll go under the uh, more settings, there's an option here for notch hiding. And that what it gives us essentially is a, a bar coloring here. You'll notice here how the notification panel just becomes more solid, it gets rounded and it mirrors the bottom. Uh, it just makes it more of basically just what you'd expect at that level. But I personally am actually comfortable with the notch. I don't have a problem with it. So let's go ahead and back into the settings and I'm gonna go ahead and keep it in. Uh, as far as the the display's resolution, by default, it is turned on to be in a smart mode, meaning it does fluctuate between high, which is the Quad, quad HD, down to 1080p, or even all the way down to 720p to be able to basically manage the battery. You have obviously some additional options here, display carrier name, display network speed, screensaver auto-rotate, of course, and full screen display for the applications that are not supported. Now under color eye comfort, we have the ability of going to uh, natural tone, color, mo uh, color mode, and temperature. You can customize it, of course. And of course, you have last but not least is the eye comfort option to turn on to disable some of the blue tones and the colors in the display. We're using Google Pay, it does support that. Uh, Huawei ID, wireless networks, of course, all the options. This is a dual SIM uh, device, so you're able to put in either two SIMs or a SIM and an SD card. Uh, data uses VPN, private DNS, of course, airplane mode, Wi-Fi. Uh, next thing here, we have the home screen wallpaper setup. You have theme support, wallpaper, and these are some of the aesthetics of EMUI 9. They group them in a much better organization way. So we no longer have themes by themselves, but now you have themes, magazine unlock, and wallpaper in the same setting. Home screen settings, that's if you want to be able to customize the auto line, app uh, badges, icon, uh, Google feed if you want to turn it on, home screen loop, all the options that you'd like to set up will be under there. Home screen style is standard. You can turn on the app drawer if you like. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on for me and I'll give it a second, go back into settings. And of course, uh, other than that, we have obviously your uh, show step count and always on display if you wanna turn that on and customize it as you do have the ability of going in all day, start time, end time, and you can even turn it off at, depending on the eye timing that you want. Um, under sound, of course, all the standard sound options that we have, we have the Dolby Atmos configuration as we have it supported here. We have the smart film music. Smart is pretty much just the auto tuning. It'll turn on and it'll customize to whatever you're using. And if you go under more sound, of course, we have the uh, mobile network setup, startup sound, vibration touch, and all of those. Notification, you can go in there, app icon badges, more notification settings, just gives you access to notification method, as well as notification turn on screen, and then, of course, pulse and notification light, as we have one at the top. Of course, we have access here to app twins, app gallery assistant, and default applications for if you want to switch your launcher, permission, as well as app management. And under the battery is where we'll find that really nice functional feature, which says darken the interface color. And this is how I was able to get that dark theme running here. This is not a theme, this is just a mode within the battery to save power. As um, of course, since we have an AMOLED display, anytime we're using black, it basically just turns off those, uh, those pixels and we don't have to worry about them. Uh, so app launch, battery usage, power consumption detail, darken interface, wireless reverse charging is that little thing that we were showing you guys, of course, before, where you have the ability of using this device to charge others. You have to turn it on. By default, it is not on. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the display. I had to turn it on. Um, and I have here with me is the Pixel 3 XL. I'm just gonna put it on here. 
and you'll notice right there it starts to do wireless charging. Now you can keep it on or turn it off and I'd like to keep it off till I actually need to use it. Uh, last but not least of course is the digital balance which is uh, basically their version of the digital well-being uh, and it does pretty much provide you the same information bedtime app limits of course usage and of course screen time management pin if you want to be able to set that up on your device and it breaks it up uh, and you're able to go in there and see the different usage don't have a lot of it on here so obviously it's not going to have that much information uh, security and privacy of course we can set up the fingerprint id the face recognition the lock screen the password uh, the app lock of course private space as well as file safe so those two are supported and then of course find my device location access and under more settings uh, we can see the encryption uh, credential install apps obviously from third-party installers trusted agents uh, device identifier usage information and then screen pinning will be under this tab smart assistance of course high touch one-handed mode uh, motion control voice control uh, Miss touch prevention glove mode of course if you're in a cold situation you need to have it and of course schedule on and off so the one-handed UI enables you to shrink the size of the display of course here mini screen view and of course shifting the keyboard under motion control is where we have the flip uh, flip to mute of course pick up the answer raise to ear take screenshots of course the knock uh, uh, functionalities as well as split screen to be able to basically just draw a line across this is pretty much going to do for you is enables you to use your voice to do actions on the phone on the phone so you can answer calls using your voice uh, voice broadcast incoming calls speech command and offline voice broadcasting of course voice wake up and quick calling so you can have those turned on now quick calling is really functional uh, you hold the volume down button and as soon as you hit the prompt you can use your voice to quick dial something so it's not intended to replace the Google assistant but it's intended to augment the usability on this device again a lot more functions a lot of new things of course high touch gives you access to the information here you can turn it on in accessibility tab uh, last but not least the Google setup option and of course under system is where we'll find that system navigation software update date and time phone clone is what you would use to be able to import your information from your old device to the new one it'll work from iOS to, to Huawei, Android to Android, and of course, uh, it supports uh, other Huawei devices or other, uh, you know, Android devices that run the phone clone application. Very nice, very snappy, very fast. Uh, I like the UI. Uh, it, this will support third-party launchers if you want to do that. Uh, but let's not go too far. I want to share with you guys real quick how the sound is on this. Definitely by far my favorite song always, Alex Grindo, uh, Jumbo. It's an NCS song. We're going to just play a quick bite of it just to see how the sound plays here, where we have stereo speakers on this device. So one thing you may or may not notice at this point is that we didn't have any speaker grills at the bottom and you're probably asking yourself is where's the sound coming from? Uh, the reality is the sound is actually coming straight from the USB-C port. That's actually our speaker. Uh, ingeniously, they basically decided to use it here and what we have. Audio sounds pretty nice, uh, definitely a loud speaker to be able to use it in case you want to make calls, listen to music and enjoy it. Uh, last but not least, you probably already noticed right there on the top left, I am running dual sims in here, I'm running a Project Fi as well as a T-Mobile sim uh, because of a trip that's coming up right now that I'll be using this to do a, uh, basically a trip vlog using the Mate 20 Pro. Now before I do the video sample from the front and the back facing sensor, on the back sensor we're able to go all the way to 4K UHD. Now we have 1080p 60 frames per second, uh, we don't have 60 frames per second on 4K but we do have 18 by 9 aspect ratio 1080p or 60 frames per, uh, per second 1080p or regular full 4k so you notice that the resolution does, does actually go all the way down to 720p and by default it's set to be uh, on the h.264 which is for better compatibility although if you want to go to h.265 to the newer standard you can definitely do so yourself on the front facing sensor we're only able to go up to 1080p uh, with the 24 megapixel sensor although i feel like they could have done more it's like it's capped currently at 1080p so here's a quick sample of the front facing camera at 1080p this is a 24 megapixel sensor again the maximum resolution is 1080p and it says hand belt so hopefully uh, there's no jiggle and uh, obviously stabilization is pretty good so I went ahead and switched over to the back facing sensor I am recording at 1080p at 60 frames per second but you may have noticed one thing I'm actually using the wide angle lens you have the ability of using the wide angle lens when you're recording video in the back so you're not limited by either the either one times crop two times crop or even five times crop 
you can go all the way ultra wide and get everything in your video. Uh, again, we're able to go all the way up to 4K and of course no 60 frames per second right now, but hopefully we'll be able to see that in a future update. And this is handheld, so hopefully the stabilization is pretty good. The Mate 20 Pro checks off a lot of boxes this year as far as features that you'd want out of a flagship and then some. Um, I'm talking about Kirin 980 with the seven nanometer chipset. I'm talking about stereo speakers and still keeping IP68 rating. We went up to six, from 67 to 68. And of course at the bottom, we're using that USB-C port as a speaker. We no longer have extra grills at the bottom. Uh, of course, I'm talking about wireless charging. We finally have that. And if we have that on top of the fact that we have reverse wireless charging. Again, and then some there. That's, we're getting a lot of these things with Huawei and they're putting a lot of cool features in here. EMUI 9.0 by far is one of the best implementations of the EMUI functionalities that we've seen in the past. It's smooth, it's unison, it's cohesive, it works across basically all the different applications in the right way. Uh, what I would say definitely is if you have a device that does not have EMUI 9.0, be on the lookout for that. There are some betas that are out there, but this one definitely starts, gets out of the box with it and it works very well. Um, I'm very happy with this and I'm looking forward to testing it out even more. Be on the lookout for a video that I did with my son tomorrow morning going on testing out that IP68 rating that we have on this device. Um, other than that, I want to say thank you very much for checking out this video. I don't want to forget to mention that the Panda application, that 3D Panda creating application, should be coming out later. It is not built in or actually included on the device yet. Uh, but from what I've seen on the phone right now, um, front-facing, back-facing pictures, all of those things have been improved. We have HDR with the front-facing camera, which just fixes so much of the exposure issues that we've had in the past with front-facing camera issues. Uh, but other than that, like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support. Keep it here. Check out my Instagram and my Facebook page so you can check out all the pictures I'm going to be posting from this. And I am going to be using this as a vlogging camera for a trip that I'm going to China. So I'm doing a travel vlog using the Mate 20 Pro as my vlogging camera. Front facing, back facing, all the things that this device can do to keep me not only entertained, but producing content for you on a trip. This is TK. I'll see you guys in the next video.